Good morning friends. Welcome back to Panika Tutorials. In this video, I want to discuss about multi-threading in Java. So I sincerely request everyone to watch the complete video for better understanding. First let me discuss about single tasking and then multitasking. So what is single tasking? In single tasking, we will execute one task after that we will execute the another task. It is like sequential execution. We can say it as a sequential execution. Let's take that you need to execute two tasks. Task 1 and task 2. First you will start the task 1. Once the task 1 is completed then only you will start executing the task 2. Now let me discuss with a simple example. Let's take that you have sent a message to person P1 in WhatsApp. Once you have decided that I will complete the conversation with him, then only I will start conversion with another person. Then what you have to do? Once you have sent a message, then person P1 has to send reply. Then again you will send a message. Then he will send a reply. Once it is completed, then only you can start conversion with the person P2. Even person P2 is waiting till you completed the discussion with the person P1, you cannot start discussion with the person P2. So here the waiting time will be very high. Even the task 1, task 2 arrival at the same time, once the task 1 is completed, then only you are started executing the task 2. So obviously the waiting time will be very high. If it is a multitasking, multitasking means means you are executing the tasks concurrently. Concurrently means let's take that I can discuss with a simple example. Concurrently you will execute the instructions. Let's take that there is a task T1 okay then there is a task T2. Now you have started doing the task T1. Now in between you could not able to complete all the operations in the task 1. Let's take the task 1 requires some IO operations. Then it will go to the block state. Okay. Then you will start the task 2. Once something about the task 2 you have completed, then again you are waiting. In the meantime, you will do the task T1. Then you will do the task T2. So like that you will do the concurrent execution. Suppose let's take that. I can give one more example. Let's take that you are having dinner. You are getting a phone call. If it is a sequential execution, first you will complete having the dinner, then you will talk in phone. If it is a concurrent execution, what you will do? While you are having dinner, while you are chewing, you will talk with other person. Then you will ask him to wait, then again you will eat little bit, then you will talk. So this is concurrent execution. Here the waiting time will be less. Whereas in the sequential execution, unless until you complete the dinner, you will not talk in the phone. So here the person who is interested to talk with you in phone has to wait for more time. Whereas multitasking is efficient, okay, the system performs will be very high and average waiting time is also very less so that's why we always prefer to execute the tasks in multitask or concurrent way now the multitasking are broadly classified into two types one is processed based multitasking and second one is thread based multitasking process based multitasking and second one is thread based multitasking. What is the difference between process based multitasking and another one is thread based multitasking is let's take that you have taken two numbers A and B. Now you want to perform the sum, you want to perform the subtraction, you want to perform the multiplication and you want to perform the division. Then what you have written, you have written the four programs. Okay, program P1, program P2, program P3, program P4. Now here what you will do, you will execute them concurrently. Some part of the program P1 you will execute, then some part of the program P2 you will execute, then some part of the program P3 you will execute, then some part of the P4. Like that you will execute them concurrently. Now as it is four programs, you need four memory units. Am I right? So the memory 
utilization will be very high so that's why the process based multitasking we will call it as heavy weight processing we will call it as heavy weight processing i hope you are able to understand heavy weight processing we will say because each program needs a certain unit of memory so that's why the memory utilization is very high so that's why we'll call it as heavy weight processing if it is a thread based multitasking what you will do with those programs is you will make it as a single program only in single program you will write one module for the sum one module for the subtraction one module for the multiplication okay for multiplication let me write it as shortcut m u l one module for division so you will write a single program in this single program you will have several modules all these modules you will execute concurrently if you have written a single program you need one unit of memory okay so as it requires less memory i can say that thread based multitasking we will call it as light weight processing what is meant by thread thread is the smallest part in a program small part of the program we will call it as a thread okay i hope you have understood what is a single tasking what is a multitasking and what are the different types of multitasking such as process based multitasking thread based multitasking and what is heavy weight processing what is light weight processing now we will discuss about thread based multitasking in detail what we will do is that we will create several threads and we will execute now let me discuss about the life cycle of a thread life cycle of a thread meaning is that what are the various stages it will have like if i say okay let, let's take that a human being a human being when he is a small kid he is a kid okay when he is a 10th class then we will say he is a youth when he is uh, doing the job we will say he is a responsible man when he married and he got a kid then he will say that he is a father when he has the uh, grand kids then we will say he is a grandfather okay so like that we have various cycles or various stages for a human being similarly for a thread also we have various stages a uh, one stage is that new or create stage okay during this task you are creating a thread okay during this stage we are creating a thread how to create the thread we will discuss then we will say that a thread is runnable means it is ready to executes its task so all the threads which are created will be waiting in the queue okay to perform its task now we will have the running stage means the process or the thread which is currently running any time a processor can run a single thread only even multiple threads are waiting in the runnable among this multiple threads which are there in the run queue the thread which has the highest priority will be transferred to the running stage and that will perform its task and then a thread can end or terminate once it tasks are completed we will say that it is end but however from the running certain times we can even block or suspend the thread okay meaning is that every thread need two times one is two times meaning is the times t i m e s means one is the cpu time and another one is the i o time the cpu time to perform the operations okay or the cpu need to execute the operations and another one is every thread need to perform the input and output operations it needs to read the variables okay to perform the certain operations or it needs to save the output so it needs the input and output devices also during that time it will go to the suspend it needs some input device uh, permission to do certain things but the input device is busy then in that case what you will do from the running stage the thread will be gone to the suspend state once the io device is ready it will go back to the runnable from runnable it will go to the running so we have totally five stages okay one is 
न्यू आर क्रिएट अंदर वन इज रनबल रनिंग एंड आर टर्मिनेट आर ब्लॉक आर सस्पेंड सो द न्यूली थ्रेड वी विल से दैट इट इज ए क्रिएट स्टेज वंस इट इज क्रिएटेड सपोज लेट्स टेक दैट यू हैव क्रिएटेड थ्रेड टी वन देन द थ्रेड टी वन विल बी इन द क्यू देन यू हैव क्रिएटेड द thread t2 then thread t2 will be waiting in the queue because queue follows the first in first out principle then thread 3 3 okay and each thread has a priority the thread which has the highest priority will be transferred to the running stage what is the priority all these things we will discuss one by one so the thread which has the highest priority will go to the running stage suppose let's take that thread t1 has the highest priority then it will go to the running stage remember one important point among multiple threads only one thread at a time will go to the running stage so that the cpu can perform its operations if this thread requires some any io time then it will go to the suspend stage if its task is completed then it will go to the end state from the suspend state suppose let's take that thread t1 requires io time then it will go to the suspend state remaining threads t2 t3 which has the highest priority that thread will go to the running state suppose let's take the thread t2 has the highest priority as compared to the thread t3 then t2 will go to the running stage and t1 will be there in the blocked state once the io is done then t3 will go to the runnable state i hope you have understood the life cycle of a thread now we will discuss what are the steps involved to create and run threads let me discuss that one steps to create and run threads where are five steps are there the step one is that you need to create a class that extends thread or run implements runnable class so either you have to extend the thread class or you need to implements the runnable interface and the step 2 is that you need to write the run method in the run method only you will write the main code once the thread is starting which code you want to run that code you will write in the run method and the step 3 is that you need to create an object for the class which you are extending from the thread class and the step 4 is that you need to create thread object and link it with our class object which is created in the step 3 and step 5 you will run the thread using the start method let me write all the steps the step 1 is that what you need to create a class that extends thread class or implements implements runnable interface okay implements runnable interface and the step 2 is you will write the run method that run method will have the main code which you want to execute then what you need to do you need to create an object object to the above class means the class which you have created in the step 1 for that one you will create an object then step 4 is that create thread object and link it with our class with our class which is created which is created in step 3 and then step 5 is run the thread using start method okay so all the steps i will discuss practically by writing a small program or before that i can write the skeleton what you will do is that you will write class okay my thread okay extends thread class or even you can write here 
implements runnable interface also you can write this is your step one then what is the step two you need to write the run method so i will write public void run method and the name of the method should be run only you cannot use any other method so here you will write the main code then you will close the class my thread then what you will do you will write a class which is a main class whatever the name you want to give you can give here you will write public static void main string args okay then what you will do you will create an object for the above class suppose let's take that my class is my thread for this class i will create an object new my thread okay so i have done the step three what is the step three create an object to the above class what is the class my thread class for that class i have created an object then what is the step four create thread object and link it with our class which is created in step three so i will write thread class i need to create an object let me create an object as t new thread and then you need to link it link it means you will write the my thread class object here okay you will pass a parameter which is my thread object which is ob then the step 5 is run the thread using start method then you will write t dot start then you can ask me sir there is no start method we have written only run method but if you use the start method it will call the run method only then whatever the code is there here that will be executed i hope you have understood the skeleton okay now what i will do is that i will go to the desktop java programs here i will create the new text document and i save this document as threads ex dot java okay let me click yes let me open this one using notepad plus plus now i will write the program okay so first what i have to do i need to create my thread class whatever the name i can give any name but it should extends thread class or you can even write implements runnable also then what i will do i will write the run method public void run method here what i will do i will simply write int i for i is equal to 1 to i less than or equal to 5 i plus plus then i will write system dot system dot out dot print ln i okay then let me close the run method let me close the class then i can write class what is our class here threads ex okay is our class then i will write here public static void main string args let me open the curly braces now what i have to do is that i need to write thread t is equal to thread dot current thread i will write okay let me end with a semicolon and then i will write system dot out dot print ln and i will just display the t okay look at here what will happen let me end with a semicolon let me end with let me end the main method and let me end the threads ex class now let me save this program i want to compile this program and show the output for you now you know that all our programs are there in the desktop java programs then java c threads ex dot java there are no errors now let me run the program java threads ex now you can see we got the output as thread main 
5 main what is this one is you are currently running the main thread the first parameter main says that this is the main thread and second one says that priority by default the priority is 5 and it says that main group so you have totally three parameters are there the first one is which thread you are currently running and what is its priority by default for all the threads you have the priority value is 5 and what is the group currently it is running the main group okay so this one i will call it as a parent thread now you can create the child threads okay all the threads will be there in the group called main group however we can create our own group also uh, that concept i will discuss with you later now what i will do is that i will create the child thread so already i have discussed how can you create the child thread what is the step three you need to create an object for the my thread so i will write th is equal to new my thread okay and let me end with semicolon this is the step three then what i need to do i need to write thread tr is equal to new thread and then i need to pass the my thread object as the one parameter so i am linking then what should i write i need to write the start method so i will write tr dot start so look at here if you want to see the what is this thread class all these things then you can write again system dot out dot print ln you can write tr let me save this program and let me compile the program there are no errors let me run the program now you can see thread main thread with the what with priority is 5 and in the main group then you have created thread one then you can ask me sir we have not created thread one it will give thread one okay name it will give by default as thread one the next thread as thread two like that and by default all the threads have the priority value is five and this thread also your tr thread is also in the group called main and you can see the output as one two three four five so this for loop has run because once you use the start method then automatically it will invoke the run method and what are the statements which are there in the run method will be invoked you have written the for loop so it is starting from 1 to 5 it is displaying the value now what i will do is that i will create one more thread okay so i am writing my thread th1 is equal to new my thread thread tr1 is equal to new thread th1 then system dot out dot print ln tr1 tr1 dot start now let me save this program okay so how many child class i have created two child class this is child class one this is second child class okay let me write this as second child thread i should not i should use the thread okay this is first child thread okay under the parent thread now let me save the program now let me compile the program now let me run the program now you can see we are getting 1 1 2 2 3 4 3 5 4 5 like that but we don't know which thread is currently running is the thread tr1 is running or tr is running we don't know so what we have to do is that we need to pass the thread name and the thread name should be able to access here so that we can print it so to do that one what i will do is that i will use the constructor here okay i will write here first okay i will write first thread okay here i will write second thread now you can see here here if you can see by default it is giving thread 1 thread 3 uh, priority is 5 5 under the group called main now i am changing the names okay thread 1 thread 3 to first thread second thread and then here i need to use one constructor called my thread 
now i will write string some t name then i will write my thread constructor i will use okay here i will write string some s and then i will write here t name is equal to s let me end with curly braces okay now you can look at here here i will write t name plus for concatenation open the braces and then i will give space and again i will write concatenation plus now if i run the program look at here let me clear the screen so i will write cls to clear the screen then i will compile the threads ex dot java program there are no errors let me run the program threads ex now you can see main thread is currently running with priority s5 in the group main then thread 1 5 main thread 3 5 main means thread 1 thread 3 and the priorities are 5 in the main thread group then you can see first thread as running 1 second thread 1 second thread 2 first thread 2 second thread 3 first thread is displaying 3 then second thread is displaying 4 first thread is displaying 4 then second thread 5 first thread 5 again if i run the program you can see now first second thread is starting here first thread has started now second thread has started because both the thread have the same priority so anyone can start executing okay however we can change the thread names also and thread priority also those things we will discuss now look at here second thread it started first thread then second thread first thread like that we are getting the output if i run again look at here what will happen now thread one has started and which thread has ended first thread has ended here second thread has ended whenever you run you will get different output because they are threads any thread can start executing okay so because all the threads have the same priority now even we can assign the priority also all these concepts i will discuss in the next video like we will discuss about serializable okay we will discuss about the server type threads okay how can we make one uh, user thread into server thread and how can we give a priority to the threads and how can we sleep a particular thread or how can we suspend a particular thread how can we use the join method all these concepts i will discuss in the next video if you have any doubts related to the concepts which i have discussed in this video feel free to ask me in the comment section i will try to clear your doubts as early as possible thank you for watching the complete video have a nice day